Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. If you remember last week, um, we played around with this little extension tube that I put on my Larabi's vaporizer. And we stuck it on here and we ran a couple test caps of oxalic acid through it. And the test last week was to show or to see if vapors would escape all the way from the end of this longer tubing or if it would coagulate and gum up the center, keeping any vapors from escaping the end. And as we learned last week, it works very, very well with that extension tube on there. And um, the reason I'm playing with this is I have a couple of colonies and they have plastic entrances and plastic landing boards and I don't want anything to melt. So this week we're back out here to look on improving this a little bit because of course this being copper and getting to 400 degrees it's going to melt plastic so i need to keep the copper from touching um, the plastic entrances so what i did was i took a block of wood and i took my dremel and i started whittling it down until basically i had a small chunk of dowel rod and if i would have had a small chunk of dowel rod it would have been a lot easier than starting with a piece of of wood and whittling it down but um, after I got it down this far I got a crack down the side of it so I took some masking tape and put over it and you know if I was putting this masking tape on the copper tubing it would obviously burn off but sticking it on the wood I don't think that's going to be the case so how this works is this hole goes all the way through this wood block which is about an inch long and um, it slides right onto my copper tube like so. Okay, so we've got our extension nozzle slid on with our wood tip. What we want to see now is if the vapors coagulate or build up inside of this wood tip before escaping. And that's kind of what I fear just because of the wood not holding any heat. So we will see here. Vaporizer just kicked off and we are up to temperature. push that down on there good and tight. Last week I had a little leak. I tell you, that's pretty impressive. I really figured that wood tip would plug up, but as you can see, we're still getting plenty of vapors. Now, of course, I won't be able to tap the vaporizer on any on the landing board, but you can get the same result by tapping the lid. Okay, so we're still holding temperature. Let's go ahead and go right into the second cap and see what happens. I tell you folks, that's going to work good enough to get your mite drop. So we just ran two caps through it. Even if I had to clean it now to do two more caps or two more treatments, totally worth the effort. I absolutely love the options with this vaporizer. Pretty cool. So now we can flush it out and put a little water in these. It could also blow the cap, so you want to be very careful if you do this. See? Now, let me explain why I blew the cap. The reason to blew the cap is we are definitely plugged down here somewhere. The pressure built up, it had nowhere to go until it forced the cap off. So, you got to be careful when you do that. I should have known to uh, pull this tip off and check. 
Actually looks like it pushed a lot of the crap out though. Yeah, it's open now. Pretty cool. Let's try another cap with water. Should go through now. And that's a good way to clean out the system when you're done treating. So now all we need to do is test it on a colony. But really, I don't see any reason it would not work. You got the wood here, and you can see it's, it's steaming now, right? How do I know it's not going to melt plastic? Because watch. This wood tip down here, I'm able to grab it and take it off and this is probably 400 degrees right now folks clean off this extra acid on the end i'll tell you the acid was hot the wood block just for running two caps through it is not hot what that is i think is a little bit of my masking tape getting burgered from the heat the other option that was kind of suggested to me and I thought was pretty brilliant. You've got the round disc entrance um, on the Apame colonies. What you may be able to do, if you can get you a cork made of true cork material, anymore it seems like they're made of some synthetic crap, but if you can get a true cork cork or stopper and put it on the end of your extension tube, and drill a hole through it, of course, um, you could put this cork in your entrance disc and treat through that way. Now, from what I've noticed is most of the time there's a frame covering that hole behind the entrance disc, so I don't know how well your vapors are going to go in. Um, you may not want to try and do opposite of what I did here. Here I drilled the hole straight through the cork. If you drilled your hole at an angle, so that when it's sticking in here, the fumes come out, you know, at a pass something like this, then you might be able to shoot your vapor right around the frame in the center and still get a good uh, vaporization. Just uh, a little food for thought there, folks. Worked pretty good. I'm really amazed at how easy it was, really. I was worried all that time. How was I going to treat my Apple May colonies? Ideally, you're supposed to leave this rag on there for a few minutes. Let them vapors linger in the colony. That's why I have the rag there. As you've seen, the rag didn't really have much of a place to sit on that colony. It wanted to slide off. So obviously, before you treat with oxalic acid, you want to have your honey supers removed. At least that's what the old roll used to be. Um, and I still follow up myself. Um, here recently, I have seen that the roll changed and says now you can leave the honey supers on. Now where that roll stands currently, I have no clue. And the reason I don't know is because I just remove them. It just makes sense to be safe. Just remove your supers before treating with oxalic acid. Now. Since I knew I was going to be experimenting today with the Apame colonies, I took the liberty a couple days and went through all of my Apame colonies and made inspections, removed the supers. Actually, the super I removed had the uh, double-decker Ross Roundcomb frames, and, and the bees didn't really do much, but um, if you're interested in how those colonies are doing, um, here's what that looked like. We'll start off with the seven-framer and see how they're doing. I haven't fed any of these colonies for months now. 
Um, I have been doing a little bit of open feeding, but nothing using uh, the top feeders here. I'm not going to go frame by frame and pull stuff out. Just going to go by the overall top appearance here and see how things look. Um, got a lot to go through here. So I want to work quickly and use my time wisely here. So looks like they're not using one, two, three frames. So are they not growing? Let's see if we can see a frame of brood. I'm smelling the nasonove gland. It smells like uh, lemongrass oil. A little bit jumpy. Notice I got my suit on, or my jacket. I usually don't wear much protection. The last time I was over here uh, weed eating though, they were not too happy to see me. Okay, brood. I'm going to kind of force them to grow. I'm going to put that brood frame there. And we'll put this frame back in between. It's what's referred to as checkerboarding. So that's all I really need to see. There is a queen. They are growing a little bit. Um, at the very least, I can put the divider in there, I guess. And um, try and overwinter them on three frames. I don't know. That sounds kind of risky, but it is insulated. They shouldn't need as much food to keep warm because of the insulation factor. I don't know. I'm going to have to play around with this and think about this a little bit. Let's go down to the Wood Hive upgrade kit um, from Apple May and see how it's doing. I want to do the ergo kit last, I think. Okay, so what we have here is we have two wooden Hoover Hive boxes, which I really like. And on the bottom here, we have the Apame Wood Hive Upgrade Kit. So you get the Apame bottom board, which is their pollen trap and uh, their entrance reducers. You get all the features of Apame and their bottom board. And that's what we have combined here. We've also got their insulated top cover and their two inside um, feeders. I'm seeing stripes down the heads of these bees so I know they're working the jewel weed and that doesn't surprise me. We got a lot of that in bloom right now. So here would be the two top feeders that come with the wood hive upgrade kit. And as I mentioned, I haven't done any feeding with these feeders for quite some time. Now I was kind of anxious to pull this off in hopes that they did something with these uh, Ross Round um, frames, Saracel frames, whatever you want to call these. They're double deckers, but they are completely untouched, folks. So what I'm going to do is remove this top box, get rid of the queen excluder, and combine them down to one box. And this should probably be noted for people using these double deckers. There's too much bee space here on the bottom. We've got, and I don't have a tape measure, but there's a good inch, maybe inch and a quarter there. And that space is allowing them to draw comb between the excluder, or actually between the frames and the bottom box, over top of the excluder, and right up to the bottom of the double deckers. That's a problem. I'm going to force all these back down in there. So if you're going through your hives and you notice big chunks of comb in places that shouldn't be, there's something wrong with the spacing. Something wrong with the bee space. Here's at the bottom of it looks like. And here it is from the top. 
And the colony looks really good. It's bees from side to side. So that's, that's exactly what I want. I'll force these back down and over. I'm gonna move the feeders down to this position. And folks, I'm gonna be honest with you here. I've had a lot of people contact me here in the last, last few months wanting to know how I am going to go about using these Apame feeders and uh, going through winter. A lot of people are really thinking about feeding fondant and, and dry sugar in these feeders, which that's the way they're designed. Um, they're designed, if you turn this the right way, then the bees can come all the way out into this compartment and consume dry sugar or fondant. But let me tell you what my concern is. Here in Ohio, it gets pretty darn cold. And if the food source is too far from the cluster, um, the, bees either, the bees are either not going to go to that food source or they're going to get to the food source and they're going to get cold and they're going to stay there because they're not warm enough to move back to the cluster. So what you'll end up having is a large bunch of bees dead at the food source. And that's because they got cold and could not return back to the warm cluster. So I hate to say it, but I'm probably going to remove these feeders for winter. And I'm probably going to come up with some kind of a feeding shim, maybe insulated. And I'm going to go to the mountain camp method and the Hive Alive fondant patties that I used last winter um, to take my bees through the winter and supplement what they need. Now I know what you're thinking, how are you going to get all them bees off of that excluder and off of that honey on the bottom of there so you can take it and eat it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that off there, I'm going to package it up and I'm going to eat it. For right now what we're going to do, we're going to move it over here all the way. Bottom's not hot yet folks, I checked it. The next thing I'm going to do is give us a little love tap. And I move it. Okay, so what I did was I took the, the deep box away from here, about 30 yards. And what will probably end up happening is if I don't get that comb scraped off the bottom of there and put in some kind of a container, then there's going to be a robbing frenzy there until all that food's gone. Let's move on down to the ergo kit. Left my frame spacers up there last time. Forgot I did that. Not really seeing a whole lot going on in the top box. I see some drones coming up. Okay, there we go. We got stuff happening. And I'm telling you about bee space. And look at my bee space here. Crack the bottom box, see how it looks. Looks well. See a lot of honey in this half over here in the right side. The rest of it looks like brood. I hope today's video was helpful for you. I'm sure those of you with Apame colonies are exploring different ways to treat them and not melt your new colony. Um, they are pretty nice. Who wants to put holes in them if you can keep from it? So hopefully that's um, one way you can go about it. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button down below. That'll let you, YouTube know that this video should be boosted into search ranks and other people should see it, at least other beekeepers. 
Also, if you'd like to see more of my videos, make sure you click the subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching. Have a great week, and we'll see you back here next Sunday, folks.